Adverts for co-pilots are everywhere at the moment, and I see ChatGPT mentioned in loads of conference talks and articles. Many of the developers I work with are excited about these new tools, probably with good reason. But some people I was working with recently were trying to use Copilot to help them to refactor. And it didn't go as well as they'd hoped. Because a large language model is many things, but it is not a refactoring tool. And I know that because there is an authoritative definition of what a refactoring tool has to be able to do to earn that title. And I'm going to explain why I don't think any large language model qualifies. Yeah, this is quite a rant. Hi, I'm Emily Bates. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. In my channel, you can find content for developers and technical coaches. If you like what you find here, please hit subscribe and like. I was surprised. Just the other day, when I went to check something on GitHub, there was this advert right in my face saying, code 55% faster with GitHub Copilot. That is a very bold claim. I've been developing software professionally for over 25 years, and I've seen several development tools reach peak hype like this, and only a few of them are still in my toolbox. Refactoring tools, for example. I have a particular interest in refactoring tools because they are so useful when you're faced with a large, complex code base that you need to understand and modify safely. A refactoring tool will help you to make design modifications like extract function or move method. Extract function is a good example, actually. Before doing anything, it shows you a dialogue where you not only get a preview of what the code will look like after the refactoring, but you also get loads of options where you can select and adjust things so that the new method will come out exactly the way you want it to. The tool will also warn you if it thinks you're about to break something in your design. Sometimes it'll even offer to fix that for you. When I'm coaching development teams in their production code, I often find that they are not making full use of their refactoring tools. It's one of the first things I usually advise. You need to learn the shortcuts for rename, extract function, inline, introduce variable, introduce parameter, and perhaps a couple more. I use those all the time. My concern is that people are getting so distracted by these new large language model tools that they're losing sight of the very useful and important tools they already have. A large language model is not a refactoring tool. I mean, of course you can ask it to do refactoring for you and sometimes it succeeds, but that doesn't make it a refactoring tool. I know this because there is a definition. A long time ago, when Martin Fowler first wrote his book, Refactoring, 1997. Refactoring was not a well-known technique and there were basically no commercial refactoring tools at the time. But of course, over the following years, they started to be developed and companies kept asking Martin Fowler to endorse their new refactoring support in their tools. And Martin, probably sensibly, refused to get involved. But he did write an article outlining what it takes to be classified as a refactoring tool. Martin Fowler, defined what's known as the refactoring Rubicon, the river you have to cross before you actually count as a refactoring tool. He says, refactoring tools have to analyze and manipulate the parse tree of the program. That is, a refactoring tool will keep an internal model of the programmatic structure of your code, not just the text of it. And when a tool does a refactoring, it will manipulate this parse tree structure and then translate that back into text that it can put in your editor. Fowler goes on to say, a refactoring that needs this capability is extract method. And he explains that even a very sophisticated text manipulation tool like a regular expression, state of the art in 1997, that just won't cut it. It won't be able to analyze the local variables and their scope and what needs to be returned and what needs to be a parameter and so on. To actually do an extract method successfully, you need to understand the code and its parse tree. So that's it, that's the Rubicon. A refactoring tool has to understand and keep track of the internal underlying structure of your program and it has to be able to do extract method safely. Large language models don't actually understand your code at that level. They don't know whether they've broken anything. They're kind of making guesses based on millions of lines of unrelated code that they've already seen. 
But that isn't the only issue. If you use one of these tools to refactor, it can reduce the possibility for you to understand your code and what it does. A refactoring tool will let you change your code in tiny, safe steps, each one of which you can have some confidence in. Good test coverage will also increase your confidence, but usually there's quite a lot that you can do safely without that, and some things you can do that still make the test pass but actually aren't valid. If you involve tools like Copilot and ChatGPT, I don't think you'll be able to keep track of enough details of the code transformations it's doing to know what subtle refactoring mistakes could have been introduced, even if you have tests and they still pass at the end. A large language model like Copilot or ChatGPT works with text. And it's good at a lot of things, but it is not a refactoring tool. It does not know your code's parse tree structure. And there are plenty of good, reliable refactoring tools out there that do, which most developers would benefit from learning to use more fluently. So that's my advice. Learn to use the refactoring tools you already have. Don't let all the hype and adverts for large language models totally distract you. I mean, is that a danger for you personally? Let me know what you think in a comment.